Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video, where today we're going to go into more detail about our fixing or stopping artist self-sabotage. Familiar, oh, I fucking did it again. I've been saying this word in my head, like, over and over again. Familiarity. I'll just say it fast, and you guys will know what I mean. Wow, that's a fucking hard word. That's like a... Cooperate. That's another hard word for me. Familiarity. There you go. This is why we self sabotage. Okay. Now, the stuff we're talking about in these like little self sabotage things, it doesn't have to be for art. Like, this is like life lesson shit, but I'm not a fucking life coach. Okay. I just do writing shit. Okay, but like the same rules apply, you know. So familiarity, what that means is a lot of the times we sabotage ourselves because we are more used to failure than we are to success. We already know how to handle failure. Success might be kind of strange to some of us. Okay, so for instance... A good example of this is when you look at like football. Okay, let's let's go some, to some sports analogies here. Okay, at the beginning of the season, there are like whatever, however many fucking football teams, thirty or some shit. I don't fucking know. And all of those teams are wanting to win the Super Bowl. Okay, and then like by January. The playoffs happen. What are there? Like 12 teams left when the playoffs start. So all the rest of those teams, they lost. They're going home. Okay. Then the playoffs happen. And every week, more teams go home. Until there's the Super Bowl and there's two teams left. And one team wins. One team holds up that trophy. One team douses their coach with Gatorade. One team says they're going to Disneyland. The other team fucks off. Okay? Now, I say it like this to illustrate the point that when you try, when you go for it, you will always lose more than you win. That's just how life is. Okay, that's how statistics work. That's the odds. Okay, but just because you lose more times than you win doesn't mean that you should ever not want to win. Okay, now when I say win, I'm using this in the term of just success in general. Okay, another good analogy I like um, is from King of the Hill. <laughs> and this goes... Like, if you remember, little Bobby, he wanted to learn how to pick up chicks. And so he went to the coolest dude he knew, Mr. Boomhauer. And he's like, Mr. Boomhauer, can you show me how to pick up women? And he's like, Bobby, dang, 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 okay? So he takes Bobby to the mall. And Bobby's all excited. He's going to learn from a master. He's going to learn how to fucking do this. And what he watches Boomhauer do is go up to a woman, and then he says something, the woman slaps him. Then he goes up to another woman, says something, the woman slaps him. And he keeps going up to women, and these women keep slapping him. And then Bobby's like, oh shit. Like, you're just getting rejected a whole bunch. But in getting rejected a whole bunch, there will be one chick who's like, hey, that's kind of cute. I like that. Here's my number. Let's do the thing, you know? And so I feel like a lot of artists or people who want to be artists, the problem we have is that we know that rejection's going to come because it always does. Because that's statistics. That's the odds. So knowing that that's going to happen, we just go, well... I already know that's going to happen, so I might as well just, like, be rejected already before I even go, because that way that's just one less step for me. Like, why go through the motion 
of submitting my stuff? Why go through the motion of putting my book out to see if it sells? Why go through the motion of promoting my work when I do it? When I already know I'm probably not going to succeed at this. Okay. That is the mindset that most artists have. But the more and more and more you do something, the more likely you are going to succeed. Okay. So if that means you submitting your stuff, if that means you putting your book out, if that means you, I don't know, starting an Etsy shop or some other fucking thing, do that thing. And a lot of people are not going to buy your stuff. A lot of people are not going to look at your stuff. But for all those people that don't, there will be one person who does. And you just have to keep doing that. You have to keep putting yourself out there. And I know that that's a fucking like terrifying thing for a lot of us. But if you... Well, like what's what's the saying? Like, um, you're not going to win unless you try. You're not going to succeed unless you put yourself out there. You're not going to gain any readers unless you put something out there for people to read. You know, you're not going to gain a shit ton of YouTube followers unless you put videos out for people to watch and decide. Okay, your job is to create. The, the consumer's job is to find out if they like your shit. That's just how it works. Okay? Now, when we feel familiar with rejection, when we feel familiar with, I don't know, feeling like shit, it almost becomes a relationship, like, in and of itself. Okay? Like, when you have been miserable for so long, you know that saying, misery loves company. Like, miserable people like to be around other miserable people because it validates the fact that it's okay to be miserable. Now, if we're just talking about ourselves, when we have this, like, loathing inside of us that we're not good enough, when if you've had that for a long time, when you finally decide you don't want to be like that anymore, it's going to feel... Like you're ending a relationship. It's going to feel like a bad breakup. Because even though that shitty, horrible feeling you had that whole time was there, it's familiar to you. It's comforting to know that it's there. Now, a lot of us probably don't think of it like that. But imagine right now, imagine if you suddenly didn't feel like that anymore, if you suddenly had all the confidence in the world in your art and in the stuff you create and how you could get it out to people and how it would sell, imagine that right now, okay? Now, a lot of you who did that probably got a little anxious. You probably were like, because that's a scary thing because it's different, okay? Like our whole lives... People in our lives, people who love us and who care about us our whole life have probably said to us, oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, that's a pipe dream. Oh, you know, it's really hard to do that. You're probably better off flipping burgers or whatever the fuck it is they say. Okay. Even though that comes from a good place, it's fucking damaging as fuck. And now what all of us have to do is try to figure out a way to like look past that and know that we deserve happiness, that we deserve success. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you're okay with letting go with the familiarity of that fucking constant rejection and that you're not good enough. You have to be able to let that go. You know, like you, I, I say this a lot, like you have to be your biggest fan, okay? And the only person who's not letting you be your biggest fan 
is you. What would it feel like right now? Let's do this again. What would it feel like right now to be your own biggest fan? To think that everything you make is amazing. To have joy in creating and then have joy in consuming the thing you create. How would that feel? Now, some of you think that that's fucking crazy. Or it fills you with anxiety. There's a reason for all of this. And it's because you if you felt like that, you need to let go of that familiarity with rejection, with like not being successful, with the whole fucking thing. Once you let that go and you are free from that, you're you could do whatever the fuck you want so as like a little writing prompt right now either write yourself a poem or write yourself a letter breaking up with your misery with your self-loathing with your self-sabotage with your acceptance of rejection Just tell yourself that you're fucking worth it and you know you're good, so you want to be happy. And then when you're done writing that, look back on it, read through it, and see if you were giving yourself any outs in there. Like if you you were being kind of like wishy-washy with stuff. And then fucking, this is the one time you're going to hear me say this, revise that and be strong with how you say that. And read it again and then put that thing up somewhere. Put it up in like your office or whatever. Or if you're into like sigils and shit, fucking burn it. Have like a whole ceremony where you're breaking up with the thing that's holding you back. I know a lot of this sounds lofty, but we are primal creatures at heart. So a lot of times we have to do things like this that are more symbolic and more ceremonial to get our heads out of our asses and get the fuck out of our own way. Okay? Be fucking Boomhauer. Go out there and fucking swing and swing and swing. And, like, when you think about it, like, the people with, like, if you're a baseball fan, the people with the best batting averages, like, their their averages are, like, three-something, which means they strike out two-thirds of the time. Okay, the best fucking horses that run races and win races, they only win maybe a third of the time. Okay, winning is not guaranteed, but like you can't succeed unless you, like Bukowski says, get into the arena. Like unless you do the thing, you will never know. But Just doing the thing isn't enough. You have to let yourself be free of that familiarity with fucking misery and fucking just not being successful. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, leave a comment down below and explain how you did this. If you want to actually share the letter to yourself or the poem to yourself, do that in the comments below. You know, fuck this shit. Like, we don't need this shit. We got shit to do. We got art to make and art to fucking show to the world. So, fuck all that misery shit, okay? And fuck that self-sabotage. If you want any of my books, they're on Amazon. The chat books are on hiatus right now. So, keep doing that. Join the Anarchy Crew. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.